Okay, so our uh, second speaker today, um, she comes from this very special place on her called uh, Portugal. <laughs> uh, as background, uh, her background is in biomedical engineering. Uh, she just finished her master's uh, degree and she started as a data engineering uh, engineer working for Critical Tech Works um, in Portugal um, that does basically software development for BMW. Yeah, welcome, Mariana. <laughs> Um, hello everyone, so today I'm presenting you the project I did in my dissertation, my master dissertation, which is development of a natural language processing multilingual model for summarizing radiology reports. So about me, as Inês uh, has told you, I come from Portugal, uh, Viana de Castelo, a city, a small city in the north of Portugal. I just finished my master thesis and now I'm working on critical uh, tech works. Uh, First of all, I would like to thank very much Inês for her invitation and for being here. And if you have any question, please feel free to uh, interrupt me. So about today, uh, I'm just going to start with a small introduction, uh, presenting uh, my motivations, then present to you the research questions, also, also the data sets I used uh, in the process, the methods I used, main results and then conclusions. Uh, so, uh, as probably some of you uh, already know, radiological examinations are communicated in the form of radiology reports. And usually the radiologist first detects the most uh, or the detailed results and then prepares a final summary with the most important observations. However, radiologists often have difficulty in accurately documenting critical findings in the summaries, for example, due to forgetfulness. And we also know that summary writing is time consuming and also a monotonous task. Um, so to facilitate data mining techniques and the development of deep learning multimodal uh, models that attempt to use data from patients of different uh, ethnicities, uh, the goal is to develop then a summarization model here that has a multilingual uh, character so, um, because it has not yet been uh, developed. Uh, such a model, of course, would help uh, very much, not only in reducing the stress and workload of radiologists, but as well as uh, building those multimodal models that can be not uh, biased uh, by patients from only one ethnicity. Uh, regarding the research questions, so uh, I have three main ones. So the first one is if is it possible to develop a model that can summarize radiology reports in different languages because this has not been done so far. And if so, what is the best architecture to solve the problem? Then are the word embeddings of similar words the same in different languages? And does using structured reports to train the model produce better results than using unstructured reports? Uh, so here we have the data sets uh, I used uh, in this project. I start by using uh, here, I don't know, I think you might be able to see because I can't point to both screens. Uh, so here I start by using the multilingual Amazon review corpus, which contains review about uh, Amazon products in different languages. But in this case, I only use the ones that were written in English. Then I also use the Mimic chest X-ray data set. Um, which comes in English and is publicly available. Uh, and as you can see, we have here four versions. So I used an unbalanced version, then a balanced version, balanced version with the words uh, separated because I found out some of the reports or most of all actually uh, had um, the words that were connected. And then uh, the one that uses separation of words a balanced data set and also that uses meta information. And what is that? Uh, so here we have a, a radiology study and the reports from the mimic chest X-ray are pretty much all like this. So it has the X-ray itself and then the associated report. As you can see, the report has several sections, but these are filled with free text. So we have a semi-structured report. Uh, in these three cases, the input is a finding section, and the label is the uh, impression, which is here, but uh, you can see, you can't uh, not read impression. 
Uh, but in this case, the input is not just the finding section, it's the finding, and it's, in this case, it's the indication in comparison. So all the other meta information that is present in the report, but the label would still be um, the um, impression section. Um, I also translated the data set to Portuguese, this one. Then I used the Indiana University chest X-ray data set, also publicly available, but I translated to Portuguese. And then at last, a German radiology report from a, a German uh, hospital that contains reports of uh, cities all in German. Uh, before moving on, I think I, I just want to uh, share with you some uh, basic concepts. Uh, starting with natural language processing, NLP, whose goal is to mimic language processing similar uh, to humans. And it's used for various tasks, such as generating text context or generating a new sentence from an input text, for example, when summarizing or uh, translating a text. To solve these tasks, um, the most uh, usual and common uh, use network is uh, transformers, which is a neural network that learns the context and meanings of words. And to do so, they use word embeddings, with that, which are just numerical vectors that represent the semantic meaning of a word. Although uh, these word embeddings do not um, have in account the relationship between different words in a sentence. And to do so, uh, transformers use a mechanism called uh, self-intention. For example, here we have a transformer whose goal is translation. Uh, to translate uh, this verb here in French, the model uh, due to the self-attention mechanism know that it has to pay attention to the subject to translate, but it also knows that it does not have to have in account uh, this word here to make the translation. So it's a very important mechanism. The transformers uh, were first introduced in this paper here. You can see the name, but its attention is all you need. Um, and here is the uh, architect, general uh, architecture. We can see two blocks, the encoder block, which receives the input and creates a representation of it. And then the decoder, which receives the um, encoder representation, the encoder fixtures, and also some other inputs and then creates a target sequence. There are some models that only have the encoder parts, encoder models, others that only have the decoder parts, and the ones that have it all are sequence to sequence models. Uh, so here I have the approach I use, uh, the full pipeline. Um, I start by using uh, the main uh, model that I used as base was that model there, MT5, um, which is available on the Hugging Face uh, platform. And it, it was pre-trained with the, the MC4 corpus, which contains 101 languages. That's why this model has already a multilingual uh, ability. Um, and uh, it is also a sequence to sequence model. Just to explain to you um, the name of the models, how they are named here. So we have a T there, which is a type of preprocessing applied to the training data set. TL, the target language or languages for which the model was trained. And then P, which is uh, the purpose for which the model was trained and can be based if the model used was the base version. Uh, you in the Hugging Face platform. Summaries, if the model was trained for summarizing texts. Translation, if the model was trained to uh, translate texts. And then RR, which stands for radiology reports, uh, 50, 100, 300, or 1000, if the model was fine tuned to summarize radiology reports with a max new token parameter of one of those there. The max new token parameter is just a parameter that uh, gives us the maximum number of tokens that a generated summary can have. So as you can see here, I start by using the MT5, uh, MT5 based model and uh, the mark data set from Amazon. And then I fine tune the model to do uh, English text summarization. And this was the checkpoint I got. After that, I use the Mimic Chest uh, X-ray dataset with all uh, the different uh, preprocessed versions of it um, to find to the model uh, to do summarization of English radiology reports. And as you can see, those models here are the ones that uh, I got. 
system are dashed because they uh, had very bad uh, qualitative results, as you will see later. Uh, so they were not used as future checkpoints. So the only ones that were used are uh, this one and this here. So the next step was to fine tune the model to do um, Portuguese uh, fine tuning, uh, fine tuning of Portuguese radiology reports. Uh, first of all, I tried to use reports from a Portuguese hospital, but the reports were pretty much uh, all the same, and my model were very, was very um, overfitted, so I had to find out another strategy. So, uh, since I had the Mimic Chester X-ray dataset, I translated the dataset into Portuguese, and I used it uh, to fine-tune the model uh, for the translation, of English to Portuguese radiology reports. And why to do this? Uh, for the translation process of this data set here, I used the Google Translator uh, library. However, the process was very time consuming. And we also know that uh, the Google Translator cannot be used for translate, uh, um, private data sets due to uh, patient confidentiality uh, concerns. So, and having in consideration that MT5 is a sequence to sequence model, I use it not only for summarization, but also for translation. And that's why I created a checkpoint for translating a radiology reports. And now I can translate any uh, private data set uh, that I have. After that, I use so this checkpoint model here and here, and I created the Portuguese version of the Indiana University chest X-ray data set. After that, I was then able to do the fine tuning to summarize Portuguese uh, radiology reports and then do the same with the German uh, data set. And this was uh, the checkpoint uh, I got. So far, uh, all models are monolingual, but that was not the point of my project. The point was to get a multilingual model. And to do so, uh, I developed uh, a model from the fine tuning of this final model here. Uh, in German, which was it is able to uh, summarize radiology reports in Portuguese, English, and German at the same time by um, fine tuning it with the three data sets at the same time, and of course in the same proportion to avoid overfitting uh, to one language. Uh, before presenting you the results, I just want to talk about a bit uh, the metrics that I use. So to evaluate the um, summarization tasks, the Rouge metrics were used, which basically will evaluate the similarity between the generated summary and the one produced by a radiologist based on n-gram overlap. And then for the um, translation task, I use the Sacre Bleu metric, which evaluates how close the translations are to their labels. Uh, here we have the quantitative results, and as you can see, these three models here that the, were trained with the non-balanced data set uh, had the best quantitative results. Um, that was kind of what I expected because all the um, pretty much all the uh, reports had the same summary. And it was easy for the model to predict the summary. But this does not mean that these models, these models learn better than the others. They just were more likely to find a report with the most common impression and generate a summary that would overlap 100% um, with that uh, impression. After that, uh, we can also see that these two models here, the V2 version and the meta information version, uh, in, in comparison to the English language, are the ones with the best quantitative results, which apparently shows us that separating words and using meta information seems to uh, improve the ability uh, for the model to produce better summaries. Uh, and you, we can also see the same that happens in Portuguese with the V2 version and um, in German. Uh, here, you cannot see, unfortunately, uh, but uh, the multilingual uh, model has also the best overall uh, quantitative results in comparison to the monolingual models. Uh, regarding the translation task, we can see that both models have a very similar um, score. And that was also confirmed by human evaluation because both models have a very uh, similar uh, translation ability. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I knew, but it's not just a mouse. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay, but this is this yeah. one you can yeah. see it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. So here we have the positive results, and as expected, the ones that were trained with the uh, unbalanced data set had really, really bad positive results. Uh, so yes, the models were completely um, overfitted. We can also see that the higher the maximum token parameter is, the better the generated summaries are. So uh, summaries with uh, less tokens are insufficient to convey uh, the critical information of the reports. We can also see here um, that the models that have the best results are the ones with um, the trained with the balanced data set, 1000 maximum token parameter, and that were not V2 or meta information version. For example, here in the English language, 66.67 uh, of the generated summaries were equal to or better uh, than the reference summaries. Um, whether this value for, for example, the V2 version was only 53.33%. Uh, percent. This analysis was performed by two radiologists, which were asked to classify 30 generated summaries and 30 um, human writing summaries, but they didn't know which was who. Uh, and they had to say if they had the same quality uh, one and another, or if one was better than the other, and they had also to classify uh, with a scale from one very poor to five very good in terms of readability, factual correctness and completeness, and also overall quality. Um, we can see that the same analysis that we did for the English language, that is the model that is not V2 version or uh, meta information version, also can um, be done for Portuguese and German as the models that are not V2 are the ones with the best positive results. Uh, that's, uh, it's a bit uh, tricky because Rouge scores shows us the opposite. Um, some reasons that probably led to this to happen is uh, that two clinization and word separation, for example, uh, these models here uh, might have learned uh, that uh, concatenated words are unique tokens, and uh, they were able to learn and capture specific semantic meaning or the main specific uh, terminology. Um, and therefore, they had the uh, best uh, results. Uh, we also know that Rouge scores do not have in account uh, some subjective aspects, so, such as the clinical value of the report. Uh, so they just go strict to the n-gram overlap. So that's also uh, another factor that might lead uh, for these models here with less preprocessing uh, had best uh, results. Regarding the multilingual model, we can see that, again, as overall the best qualitative results, also had the best overall quantitative results. Um, and that's probably because uh, the model that was used as a version to train, uh, at basis to train the final uh, model, uh, as shared representations across languages. So by jointly fine-tuning in English, Portuguese, and German, the model was able to capture, uh, to capture cross information linguistic, uh, and then produce better summaries with high quality. And besides this model, the MT5 based model, and so the checkpoint that came after it, uh, is also able to apply language transfer learning uh, in the summarization test. So in the English summarization, the model may have learned some uh, strategies uh, for summarization that were very effective, and then transfer some of that knowledge to Portuguese and German summarization. Uh, thank you. Uh, I also may uh, like uh, um, analyze the analysis of ChatGPT, where I asked GPT, okay, I asked him in two different ways, uh, just to check uh, it was going to be different. To summarize this section here, here we have the original summary, the summary produced by ChatGPT, and the summary produced there by the uh, multilingual model. As you can see, ChatGPT uh, produces a summary that is basically the same length 
of the original findings. It does not synthesize information, rather rephrases the information. So it does not have the ability to discern um, the relative uh, importance of different pieces of information. We can also see that the original summary either, and the one produced by the model are very much uh, the same, uh, which is expected since this model was um, fine-tuned specifically uh, for um, summarization tasks of radial G reports, and ChatGPT is not uh, a good idea, as we can see here. Uh, so to conclude, and answering the first question, I can say yes, the, uh, the answer is yes. Uh, so usually in the summarization task, transformer-based architectures are the most used. Um, and in this case, I use the MT5 based model uh, due to its multilingual ability. And the results proved us that the multilingual model is better at producing high quality summaries than using several monolingual models. Uh, and also it's better than ChatGPT as we were uh, also able to see. Are the word embeddings of similar words the same in different languages? No. Uh, so transformer-based models use a random uh, initialization of the weight metrics and will refine these weights uh, during the training. Uh, so they will learn their word embeddings for each word independent. And uh, at last, um, with my study, I also conclude that using structured reports is going to be easier because we don't have to go to much pre-processing. We already have a label and the impression we don't have to apply so much data mining techniques to find one. Um, so it is harder, but both approaches are possible. And if well done, uh, can lead to the same results. And thank you very much for your attention. I really appreciate uh, your time and I would love to hear your feedback.